Huh. Want to support your favorite internet doggo? Don't want to send him nudes for some reason? Well, consider supporting him on Patreon. Just a dollar a month makes a huge difference. Or more, he would be very appreciative. Send, send nudes, though. Do that, please. Hey, guys and girls, do you like the Skyrim game? Hit the dragon with your sword. And look, stab that guy, and that guy too. Hit the dragon again. Make light come out of your stick. Well, fuck you. Has Skyrim's modding community become a misogynist nightmare? So, let's take a look. Has Skyrim's modding community become a misogynist nightmare? Warning! Many of the links here are not safe for work due to an absurd amount of nudity. Well, we'll be taking a look at those then. We're all used to seeing outlandish Skyrim mods. The Thomas the Tank Engine characters as a replacement for dragons is a classic. Good-natured mod-based hijinks are par for the course. What you might not be expecting, however, is the troubled current state of modding culture. The modding scene is getting frighteningly misogynistic, and it only takes a cursory glance at the Nexus to see it. Good-natured mod-based hijinks are par for the course, she says. Iron Man suits and Macho Man Randy Savage. Stormtroopers and Master Chief. Realistic horse genitals. Nothing but good-natured mod-based hijinks. But scantily clad ladies with big racks? There's nothing good-natured about that. After all, that means you hate women! Which strange, though, is that it's not exactly difficult for you to get your hands on male-related nude mods for Skyrim. Schlongs of Skyrim, version 3.0.004. Schlongs of Skyrim allows you to bend your schlong up or down through keybinds to properly fit any other animations. And don't forget to give your fucking trusty steed a big-ass dick either. Cock mods are serious business, human or otherwise. People put a lot of long, hard work into making these mods be the best they can be. This is something that people have a passion for. And it's certainly not restricted to female-only mods of this kind. All I'm asking for is a little consistency. If you're not willing to say that male-related nude mods aren't, well, sexist too, well then quite frankly, I don't really give your opinion on sexist mod that much credit. You have to be consistent. Nexus Mods, lovingly known as The Nexus by users, has been the center for Skyrim modding for some years now. It's where every quality mod has been hosted. Wait, ho why did I say hosted? It's like I was slipping into Canadian. Hosted, eh? All the quality mods are hosted, eh? Minnesota. Anyway, The Nexus, it's where every quality mod has been hosted since the game's release. For mods that feature adult content, most know to head to the website known as Lover's Lab. You know, I was in love with a lab once. She was a bitch. And I know, I know, we might scoff at the idea of lover's lab and porn mods and nude mods and, you know, the physics of all the dangly bits, but a lot of work goes into this. This is some people's passion. This is their hobby. So we can uh, crack all the jokes that we want to, but this is, you know, work. A lot of effort goes into stuff like this, just like with any regular mod. So it's important to keep that in mind. Over the years, the Nexus has been generally good at filtering adult material out from the rest of the content and urging people to post adult mods elsewhere. And in all fairness, I understand that. A website wants to have a certain reputation. It wants to have a certain appeal. It helps for marketing and word of mouth and image if you don't allow not safe for work content, but understand they exist and tell people to take it to another place. Recently, however, the Nexus has been overrun with adult content hiding in amongst the other material. It's gotten to the point where high quality mods are being pushed out of the spotlight in favor of this adult content. I hope you're not implying that adult mods can't be high quality, but yeah. Adult content is all well and good. Well, no, no, it's not, because this article's a thing. Don't make an article saying, Is Skyrim's modding community becoming a misogynistic nightmare? And then say adult content is all well and good. Don't lie to my face, Amy. Adult content is all well and good, and it has its place alongside all other content. The problem here is that this content 
notably focuses on adult themes with Masa Wait, of course, yes, Amy, adult content is going to have a focus on adult themes. It's not it's not like you're going to install a fucking pay taxes mod. Organize your 401k mod. Those are not the adult themes we're talking about. Plus, can you fucking imagine what life insurance rates must be like in Skyrim? Holy shit. Death by Dragon, or by Jogger, is not covered by your insurance plan. The fine print, can't you see? Covers arrows to the knee. Again, it all comes back to the idea of consistency. Is adult-themed mods a good- th Is it good or is it bad that there are adult-themed mods relating to nudity and sexuality? Does it have to be the right kind of sexuality? Feminist-approved sexuality. If you're going to say that mods that have female characters with really big, comically large boobs is sexist against women, then you have to be consistent and say that mods that give all the male characters big-ass dicks is sexist against men. Anyway, the problem here is this content notably focuses on adult themes with a misogynistic lean. Women followers with comically sized butts and breasts, followers that are either dressed in almost nothing or are nude, or, well, things like this, just for starters. And really, this isn't that bad of an example at all. It doesn't make much sense from a practical standpoint in terms of armor and protection from incoming attacks, but... It is a fantasy game. These hot ladies are just pixels on a screen that accompany around the character. I think it's extremely disingenuous to imply, no, to assert, that the people who go through the trouble of making these mods and the people who install them and use them hate women. Of course, you also think that gaming culture is racist, so... Mm. Go ahead and put that in my back pocket for later. Followers in Skyrim are, as the name suggests, characters that are willing to follow you around the world and assist you in battle. In reality, though, they basically are just pack mules and people to distract the enemy so that you can kill them at a safe distance. They're meant to be warriors that fight by your side and help save the world. Somehow, it's hard to Im image? Image that developer Bethesda meant players to have these types of followers. Very strange though, Amy, and again, very inconsistent of you, because wasn't it at the beginning of this article you were saying that there were good-natured, mod-based hijinks that were par for the course like the Thomas the Tank Engine Dragon Replacement mod? It's hard to imagine that developer Bethesda meant players to have these types of dragons. What in oblivion is that? Sentries. What do you see? It's in the bar. Dragon! Good natured mud based hijinks. But scantily clad female warriors? Well, that just doesn't make any sense at all. What do you know? Another journalist on the internet talking about video games who acts as if they have never played them in their life. The bio in the article says Amy Jossowite is a gamer by day and writer by night. Author, thespian, journalist, incessant gamer, and general ne'er-do-well. And honestly, I don't think that I have ever heard an argument be made that a mod or a kind of mod is bad because it doesn't fit in with the intentions of what the developer meant the gaming experience to be. If anything else, the opposite of that argument is used as a, well, a reason why the mod is so excellent. The fact that it's so outlandish and out of the ordinary in that it goes beyond the game world itself. These are reasons that make them goofy and funny and therefore often immensely enjoyable even though they're ridiculous and silly. I mean, the point of them is to be ridiculous and silly and not to be serious. I mean, do you actually play video games? Or did you just pull a Sarkeesian because you wanted something to bitch about? I think it's also a little ironic that in this article talking about how misogynist these mods are, you make the sentence that they're meant to be warriors that fight by your side and help save the world, but it's hard to imagine that Bethesda meant players to have these types of followers. Strange in an article that's supposed to be about how misogynistic mods are. Are you implying that women 
can't be heroines who save the world? I was under the impression that women could be. But then again, maybe you can only be a hero if you follow the dress code. I don't know. I've never been a hero, really. I just play one on YouTube. The article continues. Just within the past year, these gems, and gems is italicized because it's super ironic because they're not really gems. These gems have been posted on the Nexus. Warning, all of the following links are not safe for work. And I'm gonna click them all. You're goddamn right. A buxom wench with impossibly huge breasts. This follower made to look like a young sexualized girl. A group of followers labeled harem. And a mod that changes every NPC in the game female for clearly unsavory reasons. I was expecting full frontal nudity. That was actually kind of lame. Can somebody make a trap version of this? If you went to even a few of those links, you have my apologies. I'd urge you to go look at some pictures of puppies to recover. Hmm, it appears that this video of mine has both the sickness and the cure. All in all though, if I had the talent on how to create followers in mods, if I could draw them and sketch them, render them out, if I could animate everything about them, if I knew how to do that, well, what's actually wrong with making them very attractive? So far, this article has said that this is a problem, but hasn't really stated why. Have you considered that there might be some of us who have no problem at all with the company of men? And all those lady adventurers, well, they might want to share the company of a handsome stud. Maybe a strong, handsome, fit, green orsimer who can take me by the arms and keep me warm by the fire on a cold Skyrim night who can lay next to me beneath the stars and <coughs> look me in the eye and, you know, no, something like that, I guess. There's nothing wrong with a little fantasy for people to enjoy whatever their proclivities are, and it certainly shouldn't give people license to call others hateful and spiteful. There's nothing wrong in creating something that gives you personal appeal inside of a fantasy game. And if somebody wants to have a follower or followers following them around everywhere they go, and those followers are women with big tits, there's certainly nothing wrong with that either. If they're sexually attracted to something, or want to be titillated regularly by the side of something, especially nothing but pixels on a screen, crying aloud that they're hateful sexists is, well, it's hyperbole in its finest form. It's just innocent fun, like you said. There's not the tiniest ounce of malice behind it, just nothing but good-natured mod hijinks. But some misogynistic problems are more subtle than others, Amy tells us. Many of the worst examples sneak into other mods, because misogyny is sneaky, you see. Like this otherwise innocuous hair replacement mod that uses a model of a sexualized young girl. And if you're looking to download new clothing for your female character, it's difficult to avoid clothing that isn't designed ridiculously. Though, you'll notice the men's clothing in the same mod is just fine. It links to a couple images from Nexus mods, where it looks like the mod's been pulled down for having adult content. As the article says, the female clothing set is very revealing, it's seductive, it's risque. And the male's looks like a recolor from armor that's already in the game. Not even the most zealous of Puritans would have a problem with his choice in attire. They might even tell him to relax. But one might ask themselves, why? Why, why, why is the woman's clothing like that and the man's clothing like that? Ponder, ponder, ponder as you may, the answer might seem obvious to many of you, but to some it might remain still hidden. Let me illuminate you, Amy, in particular why this is the case. Are you ready? The vast majority of people are straight. I know, I know, I know, I know. Can you believe it? It's true. It is abnormal to be gay. It is a deviation from the norm. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. I love me some big old dick. But we're just a statistical minority. Both of humans and of the gaming population. And of the gaming population who creates mods. Most people are straight. They want to see the opposite sex portrayed oftentimes as alluring, interesting, titillating, attractive, and sometimes just downright dirty. And that is fine, and there is nothing wrong with that, because no one is getting hurt, no one is getting harmed. And as much as you might like to try and imply, the image that women have is not being harmed because someone made a mod about beautiful, scantily clad women. 
Nobody goes out of their house to the real world out in public and starts groping and fondling and behaving inappropriately to women because they thought it was okay because a video game had a character who was dressed provocatively? When you stop though and give it a little think, it's kind of odd that all the people who are on the side of social justice, who are good male feminist allies, who are progressive, who are so respectful of the women, it's so very interesting that there are so many people from this side who are the ones who end up being accused, caught, or called out for sexual misconduct themselves. Seems to me like it's the male feminist allies who are the ones that you should be watching out for, not us truly liberal-minded egalitarians. So remember, ladies, if you're looking to not get groped or raped or sexually assaulted, the safest place for you is to be in the company of those terrible, horrible, no good, very bad, anti-feminist, misogynist, sexist, gamer gators. Oh ho ho, what tangled webs we weave. I also think it's a little interesting when you point out that it's difficult to avoid clothing that isn't designed ridiculously, you link to a not safe for work site, which is actually a JPEG image from Nexus Mods where that mod has actually been removed from the site. At least, that's the way it appears because you have to go out of your way in order to see it. You have to go to your preferences, and then you have to enable manually you to be able to see adult content. And then you can search for the mod, and only then can you see it. So really, even though you say it's difficult to avoid it, the truth is that you have to go out of your way to see it. These mods clearly aren't just adult. They're aimed towards a very particular audience with a very particular mindset. Namely, the mods are aimed at male-identifying folks who are seeking to objectify those who are female-identifying. Um, yeah, kinda. That sounds pretty much like the general idea. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like, is, is that... is that bad, or...? Like, is that, like, is that a bad thing that you should never ever do? Because I objectify men, and I objectify women. And you know these aren't actually people, right? You, you, you understand that these are just pixels on a screen, and there's no spark of life or consciousness or self-awareness behind them? You, know, you don't sound particularly bright, Amy, so I'm certain that you understand that all these mods and things, they're not real people. So I guess you're referring to... The idea of objectification? But, like, then again, I don't know, because in the article, you clearly say that it's that namely the mods are aimed at male-identifying folks who are seeking to objectify those who are female-identifying. And I understand that this is on a website called The Mary Sue, but, I mean, if you are consistent, then it doesn't matter which way they identify, so why bring it up? Is it good or bad to objectify people? Or is it only bad if it's a male objectifying a female. If it's bad no matter what, then why specify? Why make that distinction? You know, like, can you present the case why objectifying people in these trivial ways, like having a certain follower in a video game and some mod that somebody makes is so bad? I mean, isn't the whole idea of porn to objectify two people that you don't know and you're never going to know or meet just so that you can watch them do a thing? And that's kind of interesting about porn, isn't it? You're watching two people enjoying and doing something that you currently aren't doing but wish you could be doing, but by watching them doing it, you can imagine yourself doing it, and their joy brings you joy. And you could objectify them, both, the man, the woman, everything they're doing, but that doesn't mean that they're not human beings, and that doesn't mean that you would seek to do harm on them or that you're completely apathetic to something that might happen to them. It's just that in the context that you're watching them, they're acting out something that's basically just a theater production for your personal enjoyment. If someone came up to me and said, Hey, you know that porn you watched yesterday? Well, the guy who was in that, he died in a car crash. I mean, even though I didn't know him in person, I mean, that's not good news. I don't want people to die in car crashes. I didn't know anything about him other than he had a big-ass dick. Very strong elbows. But just because the only time I ever knew about him was when I objectified him, I mean, that doesn't mean I'd be happy he's dead, or completely apathetic that he died. Can you see what I mean? And just because I objectify pixels on a screen in a video game because I want a big anime trap with a fat ass, 
to bum around with me between occasional dragon slayings, that doesn't mean that I'm gonna treat people in real life poorly as a result, or try to strip away their humanity. I mean, Amy, have you ever tried to look nice for a guy? Or a girl? Or anybody? Have you ever never put on lipstick or earrings or got your hair up nice or maybe worn something that's complimentary to your figure or maybe something that shows off a bit of cleavage, something that makes you look desirable and attractive and alluring? Are you doing that so that members of the opposite sex might find you attractive or pleasant looking? Is that not, at least in concept, kind of the same thing, just on a different scale? And besides, this is a video game, Amy. Pretty much everything that exists inside of that video game itself is meant to, in some way, challenge or please or engage the user who's experiencing it. And there's nothing wrong with making men handsome and women beautiful, sometimes ridiculously so, if that's what they want to see. Because there's nothing wrong with wanting to see those things, and there's especially nothing wrong with wanting to see those things in an environment that can't possibly hurt any actual human being. You're just trying to be the moral police and busybody yourself with the things that other people find fun. So fuck off. Unfortunately, if you start to delve into the realm of base NPC model improvements, it's almost impossible to avoid mods that make all the women characters look like supermodels, while the male characters end up looking roughly unchanged. Alright, again Amy, that's because most of the people on the planet are straight and most of the people who play Skyrim are men. Most of the people who play Skyrim are straight men. Re, I know, it's terrible, awful. But such is life, and as a result, the people who make mods are gonna do things that appeal to that. There are mods that make the men handsome. There are mods that put vaginas on horses. It's just whatever boats your float. It's your fantasy, it's your world, you can fill it with whatever you'd like. Nobody is getting hurt. It's just you having fun at your computer. I mean, if you gave a straight person a Skyrim with mods that made all of the male characters overtly sexualized, then they wouldn't enjoy that because it's not something they find attractive. Or maybe they would because it would seem silly to them. I don't know. People can choose what mods they want. Blah, 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 most people are straight, I don't care. Ah, the followers mods remain the worst of the worst. If you're new to Skyrim modding, you'd be forgiven for wondering why this is the case. After some digging in the early days of my foray into the Skyrim modding scene, digging I still regret, I found out why. Lover's Lab has an animation framework known as Sex Lab. As you might have guessed, it allows the user to have fully animated sex with anyone in Skyrim. So those followers, mm-hmm, glorified blow-up dolls. Suddenly, the implications of those sexed-up teenage followers are pretty clear. What? I, I don't know what she means by that, actually. She, she just stops. She goes on to a different topic next. I, I don't know what the implications are. Like, I, I'm really confused here. And yeah, sometimes people install mods onto their game, Skyrim, Fallout, whatever it is, because they want to watch their character having sex with other characters. I mean, I guess that's what you're implying here. I, I, I thought it was something more subtle, or maybe you're leading that off into someplace else, but I, I guess that's it. And you know what? If that's what you want to do, you go for it. If that's the thing that just gives you your jollies, then have at it, champ. Have a have a great time, bucko. I'm not going to be some over-moralizing busybody feminist on the internet telling you that you're not doing video games right. Ugh, almost at the end here. Oof. It gets even more gruesome when paired with the download rates. Dear Lord, Amy, maybe tone down the language here. People might think you're being a little hyperbolic. And then ultimately it undermines your entire point. Your, your point's retarded, but dear Lord, you need all the help you can get here. These mods are being pushed to the top files of the month list because they're being downloaded in droves. Thousands of followers designed as unwitting sex partners. Fuck, Amy, they're not real. Amy, they are, they are pixels on a screen. They, oh my God. They can't. They can't fucking consent because they're not people. They're just... They're pixels. In a video game. I know that's the angle that you're trying to push here, Amy. It's retarded. Ugh. Thousands of followers designed as unconsenting pixel sex partners are being uploaded and downloaded voraciously. People are out there downloading these digital blow-up dolls as quickly as people make them. Yes, that, that's how supply and demand works. This isn't fucking human trafficking. These are mods for Skyrim. You made this article a month ago. That game's been out since, like, 
1992 or whatever. Mod authors who produce other content are rapidly becoming frustrated and are pulling away from the community. Are they? Can you cite that? Can you list me a source? Can you get a quote from somebody? Can you back that up with anything? Because the mod community to me looks like it's thriving, and when I go to Nexus Mods, I don't see any of that stuff. I had to unblock adult content just so that I could find the Art of Magicka mod from earlier, because before that, I thought that adult mods were just not allowed on Nexus, that there was a special place for it. You have to go out of your way to find these things, and you'll only get them if you want them. You say, those mod creators who haven't jumped ship are either very devoted to the game, or are fine with the growing misogyny of Skyrim's mod content. I've modded Skyrim for years now, and this is undoubtedly the worst the Nexus has ever looked. Then, disable being able to see adult content, you idiot, and you won't see it. You idiot. It remains to be seen if anything can be done to stop the onslaught of misogynistic mod content. Well, probably not, because not everybody is a moral busybody feminist type like you, and this isn't actually misogyny. You haven't tried to explain in this article why it's misogynist. Probably because you write for the Mary Sue, and the only people who regularly read the Mary Sue are people who think everything's misogynist anyway. I mean, you're just preaching to the choir here. You're not actually trying to convince anybody because you're not actually trying to make any case why having some Skyrim mod with some chick with big tits is misogynist or how it is hateful towards women. You're just talking to people who automatically assume that if a woman is being objectified in some way or sexualized, that it must be because of misogyny and there's no other reason and that has to definitely be their motive. Yeah. <sighs> Skyrim modding is driven by supply and demand. Hey, what do you know? That's what I said. People make and download the mods they want to play. What does it say about the gaming community and our society as a whole that these are the types of mods that are most downloaded? It means we like boobies. And there's nothing wrong with liking boobies. I really like boobs. They're great. Big ones, small ones, soft ones, supple ones, saggy, perky, you name it. If you couldn't tell, I'm a pretty sexual doggo. And you know what? One of the big differences between me and you is that I'm not going to try and be some moral crusader telling people what they can, or at least what they should and shouldn't be doing, in their video game mods. And I'm not going to use it to condemn people because they want to play a fantasy game and they want to see hot chicks in it. And you definitely shouldn't try and paint this as a male problem either. You think that it's the straight male demographic that gave rise to such classics as Fifty Shades of Grey? Or do you think it's horny chicks? And there is nothing wrong with horny chicks wanting to enjoy media that sexualizes men. I'll link it in the description so you could read more, but did you know that according to Harold Lightenberg of the Journal of Sex Research, women who read romance or erotic novels have an astounding 74% more sex with their partners than those who don't. Are you going to condemn their reading selection? Is it bad that they're objectifying men? Is it bad that these women want to partake in media that titillates them and the lady bits? Well, I say no. Let the ladies read all the smut they want. Then give me a holler. There's a lot of itches I can scratch. So, there you go. Has Skyrim's modding community become a misogynistic nightmare? No, is the answer. At least if it is, this article certainly didn't convince me. It was basically preaching to the choir. It was trying to convince people who could be convinced of anything as long as you put misogynist in the name. It didn't actually do anything to explain why these were misogynist, or why we're sexist horrible people for liking them, or why we're not going to morally condemn people who do like it. It didn't tell us why objectification is really bad in this video game. They didn't give us any evidence that modders were leaving the community in droves when modding seems to be getting better and better as time goes on. I mean, when Skyrim came out, modding was exclusive to the PC, and at least consoles are getting some watered-down version of it, at least. And take the game, Skyrim. Skyrim and pretty much all Bethesda games except for New Vegas, because they just produced it, they didn't develop it. Anyway, these games are basically infamous for being practically a platform for modders to build upon. The vanilla games are okay, but it's really the mods that the community creates that makes them shine. Or, or maybe glisten with sweat, as the case may be here. 
Anyway, those are my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, maybe leave me a little something on Patreon if you really like it. If you want to get my thoughts throughout the week, as I'm fairly active on social media, you can follow me at your pal Rags, link in the description. And if you ever need to message me, send me, uh, send me a line. Give me a holler. Let me know what you think. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go show the ladies that I'm half-dragon where it counts.